Today on Unbanned Coolies, we have a former vice president and editor at large for Philomel Books. She has authorized more than 40 picture books and novels for young readers. She holds a doctorate in English literature and taught children's literature on a college level and a reviewer for the New York Times. She is the editor of the book that inspired Unbanned Coolies. It is truly an honor to welcome Miss Patricia Lee Gouch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for coming on Unbanned Coolies. Uh, I hope you don't mind if we ask just a little question. So who was your favorite author as a kid? Well, you know, I, I think the book I'm reading is my favorite book. Um, so, I mean, there, there are certainly people that I like. You know, I, I, I like uh, Kate DiCamillo who is uh, the author of children's books, and I admire her. I admire um, Gary Paulson. I certainly admire Jerry Spinelli. So these are, these are novels that I admire. Um, when I talk about picture books, sometimes I go, oh, I start at the beginning sometimes. I go way back. And for example, there was a book called Ping, P-I-N-G. Um, and as a child, I love the book Ping. I think it's by Kurt Weitz. Um, and I'm afraid I can't, I, I don't know if the artist or the author, but I loved the book and I would read it over and over. I loved Millions of Cats by Wanda Gogg. And again, she was that same, you know, a long time ago. Um, I, I knew one of the first books of Dr. Seuss was to think that it happened on Mulberry Street. Um, and I was just a little person when I read that. I was probably five years old. So my love of picture books goes way back. My love of Coolies, Coolies is one of my favorite books. So I published something close to a thousand books when I was at Philomel. And Coolies is one of my favorite books. It is the most beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, and what it says is terribly important. So in part, I'm here because of Coolies. I believe in Coolies. So let's talk about it. Okay, thank you so much. That was very insightful. Um, so you are the editor of Multicot winning books, including Owl Mood and So You Want to Be President. What was yes. the process like when you decided to be the editor of Cooley? Did you reach out to the illustrator, Chris Soompi, or did Yin send you the manuscript? Did you tell me how this no, came to be? Yeah. No, I saw I saw Chris's work on a Dick Jackson book, um, Richard Jackson book, and it was a biography, um, and it was a, a biography of an African-American um, and I'm, I'm not absolutely sure this minute, it was a long time ago, that's maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> so, but I remember seeing the art and saying, this is, this is an unusual, this is an unusual artist. So I am sure I called Chris. Um, I'm not sure if I had the, you know, the, um, I think we did another book first and then, uh, so the coolies was by Yin, his wife, and and he was the illustrator. I'm gonna guess they brought that book to me. I don't think I imagined it. I think the two of them imagined it and brought the book to me. Congratulations on Coolies winning the International Reading Association Book Award and the Parents' Choice Gold Award in 2001. Unfortunately, you know, if you didn't know, it was banned recently. What is your take on the book banning movement and why do you think Coolies was banned? I was incredulous because when I was given the text and then of course they named it Coolies, I did a lot of research. I was not certain about the name. Uh, so I did a lot of research. So I, for example, I called the fine artist, Ed Young, and I said to him, Ed Young, do you, are you okay with that title? How do you feel about that title? And Ed Young got back to me and said, um, it's a wonderful title. It's a perfect title. 
because to us, and he's talking about the Chinese people, coolies is a is a point of pride. It's a point of pride in that um, the people who built the trans uh, the transcontinental railroad um, were proud of the work they were done, doing. They were doing brave work. They were doing work that at times other other people didn't want to do or couldn't do. So they were stepping up um, every day. And, and it, there was a double page spread in Cooley's where as a picture of the, the transcontinental um, railroad that spreads across two whole pages and it's breathtaking. It's one of the best pieces of art I've ever seen. It's, it's, there's almost nothing like it. Um, and so it was a mark of pride that people, uh, that the Chinese uh, people regarded themselves as coolies. Now, outsiders sometimes didn't, you know, use that as a pejorative term, but that was outsiders. That wasn't insiders. And so um, we were on the right side. We were trying to be, uh, we were trying to be honest and tell the true story of, of the people who built that railroad. Amazing, amazing people. I, why, why in God's name would you ever ban a book like that that celebrated a people um, and, and the, the courage they took in building this amazing railroad that everyone has profited from. Why on earth would you ban such a book? I would like to face the person that said such a thing. And I would say, tell me person, what is your reasoning? Because I don't understand it. I worked really hard on this book. Chris worked hard on it. Yin worked hard on it, getting the truth. What person that you are thinking about banning? Why on earth? Can you possibly consider banning a book that is amazing? That would be my feeling. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. But Good. why do you think it was banned? We just want to know your thoughts on it. You know what? I'm sorry to say this. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I can only think that it's ignorance. I'm sorry. It must be ignorance. If they understood the Chinese people, if they understand, understood what they did, if they understood the singularity of it, you know, it was this people who did it. It's a true story. If they understood, I do not believe they would even consider banning it. Um, I think it comes from somebody not understanding. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like a misunderstanding. Yeah. Thank you so much for your insight. Um, I really appreciate your time on Unbanned Coolies. So, you know, what are you up to these days now that you're retired from Philomel Books? Well, you know, I was going to say, in a way, the this, this story isn't over because um, it's a book that I will always protect. You know, publishers put books in print and they take books out of print. Um, so, they took this, right now, this book is in print. It was a notable book. It's a book that was highly, highly regarded by the American Library Association. So right now it's still in print, but it's been in print for many years. And so my job, even though I'm not working there anymore, is to make sure this book stays in print. Um, so that to the best of my ability, I'll make sure it stays in print. I don't have power anymore. Uh, like I did at one time, but I still have a voice uh, and that in a way was what Philomel was all about. Philomel had a voice. It was after truth. It was after beauty and it was after truth. Um, so I'll keep supporting Coolies, um, even though I'm no longer working for the company. Thank you so much for still supporting Coolies after all this time. Absolutely. Um, I really appreciate you coming and speaking with me. Listen, I want to thank you. I want to, because in a way you're helping me. So I, I hope that the right people hear your broadcast uh, and and s step up and let's let's hear from them. Why on earth would they ever uh, take a beautiful book out of print uh, if they love their children? Why would they do this? So I'd like to hear from them. 
Yeah, me as well. Thank you for your okay. time on Unbent Coolies. Okay, my friend. Bye-bye. <laughs>